Morning, guys. Hope everyone's having a good day so far. I'm just going to be tying this pattern. This is a steelhead hammer. It's a little bit different than, I think it's an Orvis pattern. They have one with a woven body. This is, I guess, like a simplified version. Um, sort of a steelhead nymph. I'll just go through the different colors that I tie this in currently. Um, so I do have a beadhead version. I also tie this with tungsten. Uh, tungsten brass or no beadhead. So maybe we'll go through a couple different colors and one with a beadhead and one without. So we'll start with Just doing the standard one here. So in the vise, I have a Mustad Signature C67S egg hook. This one's a number eight. So I think I'm going to tie this one in orange. I'm just going to take a piece of schloppen. What I do, actually, let's uh, maybe put some thread on this hook first. That might be a good idea. So I just start wrapping at the head of the hook, and then I just do a fairly close touching turn of the uh, thread down the length of the hook and that is a uni thread six up fire orange for my orange pattern of course i'm going to change the color of thread that i use depending on the color of steelhead hammer i'm tying All right. so we've got a decent thread base on there take that back up close to the head not all the way up just need to leave a bit of room to form the head on this fly. So first element I'm going to tie in is the tail. So I take a little bit of this orange schlap in. Just kind of line up some tips. Probably need about, what is that? Maybe five eighths of an inch. And we just peel those off so that the tips are matched on there. And then we're just going to measure down the hook because we just want to see where that's going to end. And then I think that looks good. So we'll tie those in. And then we're just going to use close, almost touching wraps. They don't have to quite be touching, but you want to create a smooth body. Take that into the bend a little bit. Come back up here. Trim that off. So next I'm going to tie in the rib for this fly. I'm going to use a piece of holographic, silver holographic tinsel. I tie it in on the close side. And I'm just going to wind that back up. And then next, I take a little bit of Super Stretch Floss. So this is a black color. This one's made by Superfly. Basically, it comes on a zip tied hank and it's got a lot of elasticity to the material it's great for bodies or rubber legs i tend to use it for bodies on flies like a lot of micronomids and nymphs you can use it as a ribbing as well so i'm going to take two pieces and i'm just going to make sure that 
and line up the tips. You can trim them to get them to size. And we'll tie them in just a little bit behind the eye. I just want to make sure that we leave room to form the head on the fly. So I'm going to pull that back just to give a little bit of uh, ten tension on that just so it, it when you pull on this it thins it out so if I let it go thick you see the difference that it makes in the body there so we'll just pull that out and we're gonna wrap it down to the base of the tail wrap our thread back up and this is gonna be our tie off point here I'm just going to wrap this up the hook. So you want to make sure that you have both pieces of the super stretch floss grabbed together. And if you make a bit of a gap, just want to go back and fill that in. All right, and here we are, right at the top. You want to make sure that you keep your pressure on your thread while you're wrapping that because if you let the pressure off, this floss is going to unravel really quick. So I just folded it back to lock it in place, trim that. I got quite a bit of length left over as you can see, I'll use that for the next fly. I usually get about four to six flies out of two pieces depending on the size of hook I'm using. I'm just going to add a half hitch. Just in case the thread wants to not play nice. Okay, so next we're going to wrap the rib on this fly. And we're just going to do open wraps up the length of the hook. You don't want to pull too hard on this because you'll stretch that holographic tinsel. And again, we're just going to tie it off. Make sure that you tie it off on both sides so that it's locked in place. Trim that. And then lastly, I'm just going to use a little bit of crystal chenille. Or if you have petite estas, that'll work as well. So what I do is just pull a few of the crystal fibers off the core and then I'm going to tie in this material by the core. This helps keep it fairly clean. All right. So we'll take our thread up to the eye and we'll just set it there. So when I'm wrapping this, I do it much like I'm wrapping a hackle. So I just want to pull all the fibers back with each wrap. That way I'll get a denser head and it'll be fairly clean as well. So that looks pretty good. I got enough room for my head here still. So you just want to snake your thread through. Make sure you get a couple wraps in. And then you pull the chenille back. Pull all the material back. Add a couple wraps. And we'll trim that away. So you want to try and pull all these little fibers out of the eye if you can. If not, I'll show you a little trick. Got to keep that eye clean. Okay, so we got a few that got trapped in there. Not a big deal. So you want to make sure you can put your whip finish tool through there. Just so long as you can get your tippet through the fly, you're okay. I'm going to add 
One more whip finish. All right, so as I was saying, sometimes you get a little bit of material stuck in the uh, in the eye here. So you can see I got a little bit in there. So it's not too bad, but you just want to make sure that you can put something through. So what I like to do is I take a pin and I'm going to take a lighter. I'm just going to heat that tip up just a little bit. Just enough to give it some heat. And it's going to melt all the fibers. Just to make sure that you get a clear eye. So I don't know if you can tell on there, but it's clear now. So this is the non-bead head version. All right, so next I'm gonna tie the bead head version. So again, I've got my number eight hook in there and I'm gonna use a brass bead for this one. So what I've got is a uh, four millimeter and uh, what size is that five thirty seconds maybe okay so we got the bead in there um, what color should we do maybe a so let's do a chartreuse one just get a bit of different color in there so I'm just going to use again a dot or six dot chartreuse uni thread. I'm just going to start wrapping in behind the bead here. I'm just going to lay down a thread base first just to get started. I'm going to use a little bit of chartreuse schlappen. So when I'm choosing my feathers, I want to find this one's more of a saddle hackle. It's not doesn't have the really webby stuff I'm after. So I'll save that for something else, like a woolly bugger perhaps. But the ones I really like for this pattern are the ones that have nice long fibers. So I can tie them along the whole length of the hook. You see, they almost, I don't know what they do, but they got a different look to them. Fluff all over. All right. So what we're going to do is I like to just kind of pull these fibers out to the side, find a section that I like, and then make sure all the tips are more or less lined up, and then I'll just pull it off all together and then I'll pinch all the butts together and that kind of gives me a nice uniform tail so got fluff flying around here I'm just gonna measure that on the tail how far I want it to go and then I'm gonna tie it in just behind the bead Now, the bead head version is admittedly a little bit easier to tie just because you don't have to deal with the crystal chenille at the eye, which can be a little bit tricky. But if you're tying quite a few of these, like I have in the past, it's you get used to it fairly quickly. All right, so that looks to be about where I want that. 
So again, I'm going to take a piece of silver holographic tinsel. I'm going to tie that in right at the base where the tail is. And I'm just going to tie it up just behind the bead. And I'm going to trim that to even it out. Tie in those super stretch floss. We'll tie this down the length. We got that right at the base of the tail. We'll wrap our thread up. Want to make sure that your bead doesn't get pushed onto the thread there. So we'll wrap. Just want to make sure that those two strands of stretch floss stay together so that your body stays uniform. And I use two strands just to make it go a little bit faster when you're wrapping. Uh, if you use a single one, it's fine, but it takes quite a bit longer to wrap the body. So again, you want to make sure, keep the pressure on this end until you've got that locked in place. So a couple loose wraps and then make sure you keep the pressure on there. And then you pull the floss back over and make sure you lock it with a couple wraps. If you want, you can add a little bit of head cement at that point, help keep it a little bit more secure. Then we're going to take our holographic silver tinsel. I'm just going to wrap that in the opposite direction. Try and get four or five wraps just to provide a little bit of segmentation. And again, you want to make sure that you have that locked in place by wrapping on both sides. Trim that off. And I'm going to use a chartreuse crystal chenille, I think. I can't remember what size this is. This is a Superfly brand crystal chenille. I think this might be the medium size for number eight. You're tying into a size 12. I'm going to look at using a small size. It can get a little tricky. It's fairly short. Or if you have some of the petite... Astaz material that works fairly well. I'm just going to add about three, three and a half wraps. You want to make sure you got that snugged in behind the bead. Lock that in. Trim it off. And we'll add two whip finishes. I always do two just in case. You never know. It's an extra step but it adds a little bit of extra durability to my flies. So you can see with the bead head you're not going to have any issues with the eye getting covered. All right we're at about 20 minutes here so I'm just going to do one more. Uh, let's maybe do, let's do something in pink. All right, so I've got a tungsten bead on this one. This is going to be basically the heaviest fly. So first one I did, <clears throat> excuse me, first one I did was a non-weighted one and then a weighted fly with a brass bead and then we'll do this one see if we can add a little bit more weight on this so what I do is I add a few turns of lead or non-lead weight behind the eye
So that will go down. Okay, so I'm just going to use my scissors to push that lead flat here. And you can sit it right inside the bead. All right, so we're going to use our, put our thread on. So I'm using a uh, hot pink. I'm not sure what number this is. It's one of the 500 series numbers. This is a 6 aught 70 denier. Danville Flymaster. It's a nice thread to work with. Lays nice and flat. I'm just going to wrap down to where my tail is going to end. I'm just going to try and add in a touch of a taper here. Just kind of transition that thread body into the lead so you don't have a huge bump there. Awesome. All right, it's going to use schlopping again using uh, hot pink for this one just want to make sure you get a feather with uh, lots of nice barbules for it so this fly has a fairly short tail so it doesn't matter too too much you can actually use regular hackle fibers for this if you like but I just like the way that schloppen swims in the water a little bit more all right so I'm just going to tie that in measure it along the hook bend Tie that in, trim off the butts. All right, I'm going to tie in the silver holographic tinsel. As I said in the comments, I'm going to be putting together, <clears throat> excuse me, a tutorial for this on the regular uh, videos shortly. Maybe I'll do that today. We'll tie in the super stretch floss here and tie that down to the tail. I'm going to pull these tight. And we're going to wrap them in tandem. So you can see here how that separates sometimes. What I do is I just wind back to where they separated and just make sure that they get wrapped together. <clears throat> sometimes they don't want to play nice, but. Just want to make sure that you got the underbody covered there. Okay. See how that tapers fairly nicely, just with that extra minute taken to smooth out the underbody. If I didn't do that, you'd see a big step up here. And it doesn't really make a difference in the fishability of the fly, but as far as looks are concerned, it's not one I'd want to give to a client. So. Here we go, we're going to wrap up the silver holographic tinsel, tie that off, make sure you lock it, trim off the excess, we're going to use a hot pink crystal chenille, so again I strip off a few fibers out of the core. And then I'll tie 
that in, which is behind the bead. And we'll give that about three wraps. One, two, three. We'll tie that off right behind the bead. So you want to make sure that you get the thread on both sides of that core before you cut it so it doesn't unwind. All right, and we're gonna add our whip finish. There we go, trim that off. And there's your tungsten version of steelhead hammer. A little bit of cement to secure the thread wraps. Thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe to the regular videos and you can look forward to seeing this one maybe later today or tomorrow. And if you have any questions, I encourage you to ask. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future patterns you'd like to see, whether it be trout, panfish, pike, bass, whatever, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get those in a future video. Anyways, I'm signing off. Thanks for catching the live stream and I hope to do this more often. Thanks.